After some minor setbacks, NASA is ready to start testing the SLS rocket for its upcoming flight. NASA's Artemis 1 Mega Moon rocket is gearing up for a test on Wednesday before its launch around the moon and back. And the mission team is aiming to begin a cryogenic demonstration at 7.15 a.m. on Wednesday. The Space Launch System rocket and the Orion capsule are sitting on Launch Complex 39B at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. A scrubbed launch attempt on the Artemis 1 mission on September 3rd saw engineers replace two seals on an interface for liquid hydrogen for a fuel line between the rocket and its launcher, according to NASA. And the seals were associated with a large hydrogen leak that led to the scrub of the launch attempt. And they found some evidence which caused this leak. It's called a witness marker or an indentation on the seal. And this was caused by a foreign object, a piece of debris that clearly made the dent and the indentation was under 0.01 inches. That's about 0.3 millimeters. And it allows pressurized gases to escape, which can be very dangerous and it can be flammable as well. So the team fixed the seal and it should be ready to go for the test on Wednesday. With new seals, updated cryogenic procedures and additional ground software automation, teams are now preparing to demonstrate the updates under the same cryogenic conditions that the rocket will experience on the launch day. And if this test doesn't go well, NASA may be moving the SLS rocket back to the vehicle assembly building to do more repairs. They would rather do them out on the pad. It's a little bit easier out there than moving the whole rocket back to the vehicle assembly building, which could put months into the time frame for the launch. And during this demonstration, there are four main objectives, including assessing the repair to address the hydrogen leak, loading propellants into the rocket's tanks using the new procedures, conducting the kickstart bleed, and performing a pre-pressurization test. And based on recent engineering assessments, this new cryogenic loading procedure and ground automation will transition temperatures and pressures more slowly during tanking to reduce the likelihood of leaks that could be caused by rapid changes in temperature or pressure on the site. And after the liquid hydrogen tank transitions from the slow fill phase to the fast fill phase, teams will do the kickstart. The flow of liquid hydrogen through the engines will begin conditioning or chilling down for launch. And after both tanks have reached the replenishing phase, the pre-pressurization test will begin the liquid hydrogen tank up to the pressure level it will experience just before the launch of the rocket. And this is while engineers will calibrate the settings for conditioning the engines at a higher flow rate, and it will be done during the terminal count. So performing the pressurization test during the demonstration will enable teams to figure out the necessary settings and validate timelines before they actually launch the rocket. Hey, real quick, if you could hit the like button, that would help out the channel a little bit, but it's gonna help you out even more because YouTube is gonna see that and they're gonna start recommending you more spaceflight content. And if you subscribe to the channel too, YouTube will start recommending you more spaceflight, NASA and SpaceX content in the future from not just myself, but other creators too. So it's a win-win. Like and subscribe helps both of us out. Thanks so much. And that will reduce the risk of any sort of malfunction during the launch countdown on launch day. NASA had a call to stations for the demonstration, which occurred on Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. NASA's launch director is expected to give a go signal to begin loading the cryogenic propellants into the rocket at approximately 7 a.m. on Wednesday. And this test is planned to conclude around 3 p.m. Eastern time after the teams have met the objectives and will not go into the terminal count phase of the launch countdown. Teams also have the opportunity to extend the duration of the test if they need to, if circumstances warrant it. During this test phase, teams will load propellants into both the core stage of the rocket and the upper stage tanks. During this time, the Orion spacecraft and the SLS boosters will remain unpowered. And there could be some favorable weather for this test with a 15% chance of lightning within a five mile radius of the launch site, which meets the criteria required for the test. 
and they'll continue monitoring conditions throughout the night into the morning to make sure that the rocket and the test area are all safe. I'm really excited about this mission, and if you are too, please leave a comment, but let's talk about it because this is really cool. So they're launching from Florida, and they're going to be ending up off the coast of San Diego, California, in the ocean. That's where they're going to recover this uh, Orion capsule. Now, they're going to be going around the moon. They're going to be going around the moon and slingshotting their way back down to Earth. So they're going to catch some of the gravity of the moon and come back down. They're going to be going 25,000 miles per hour during this. And they're going to be about 60 miles above the surface of the moon. So this is a really exciting mission for the future of spaceflight. Because this is basically the blueprint for the next few Artemis missions. Artemis 2 will be sending actual people around the moon. Now this one, Artemis 1, is just sending some mannequins. Three mannequins. There's a full-size, full-body mannequin, and then there's two other mannequins. Those mannequins have no arms and no legs, but they have sensors throughout their body to kind of show what's going to be happening to humans as they fly around the moon, what it's going to be doing to their bodies as they experience the G-forces of coming back into Earth's atmosphere and leaving the Earth and going around the moon and coming back. So this is a really exciting mission for science and for engineering. Now, moving forward, it's going to be going 25,000 miles an hour, like I said before, but it's also going to be 5,000, 5,000 degrees as it's entering the Earth's atmosphere. It's going to be skipping off the Earth's atmosphere when it comes back in. So it's going to hit the atmosphere, dip in a little bit, skip out, and then go back down towards the Pacific Ocean off the coast of San Diego, California. If you think about it that way, how cool is this mission? I think this is probably one of the most important missions for the future of space flight. And I hope you agree with me because once we get Artemis 1, we can get Artemis 3 where we put people on the moon again. And from there, we start building a base. We start building the future of humanity in space right there on the moon, our nearest neighbor. And then moon to Mars is the final objective. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like. Please give it a subscribe. That would be really helpful for the channel, like I said before. It's going to help both of us out. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Take care, and I'll see you next time. If you click up there, you're going to see a video that you're going to like. And also, if you click over there, I think that's where it is. If you click on my face, you'll be able to subscribe to the channel.